All right, folks, come on in. Come on in. Join the fun. It's going to be a ball. <laughs> it's going to be a big ball. All right, hi, folks. I'm Bob Shrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heine, physical therapist. Together, we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. Yeah, I'll feed you the fourth ball. Hey, Brad, we're going to do a total body exercise routine with the ball. We're going to go beginner to advanced. And we're going to use, you know, whatever you want to call this thing. It's called an exercise ball, physio ball, Swiss ball. I even heard yoga ball. Yoga ball. So there's lots of ways to call, you know, things to call it, but it all serves the same purpose. It's the beauty of the ball. The Bob. beauty of the ball. You got to love that. By the way, if you are new to our channel, please take a second. If you're over on YouTube and, and subscribe to us, we provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, pain free, and we upload every day. Also, if you're not on Facebook already, go over to Facebook and make sure you like us because Brad and I, as children, we're not liked. It's, I'm, I'm actually getting a little teary-eyed talking about it. We were picked on, bullied, and we're trying to turn things around. So if you like us, we're going to feel a lot better about ourselves. Right, Brad? There you go, Bob. All right, Brad, you're leading the show today, right? Well, Bob, we're talking about the ball. I love the ball. It works great for patient care, and it's wonderful for exercise. It does so many things for you, and you really have to use it to understand it and experience it. Yeah, and I do about three, four exercises on the ball. You do a lot more, don't you? you, 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 you well, yeah, it's right. It's, it's more of a part of my routine. Um, but actually, we'll go through it because about half of these I do. Um, uh, by the way, just to, if you, so you know the, how we run this show, uh, generally we'll do the whole exercise routine, and then afterwards we're going to go ahead and do a question and answer. So if you got your questions, we're going to have answers. Right. So and hopefully that's at least we'll right. pretend like we're. <laughs> so. Bob, do you want to turn sideways? Sure. Us? The reason is is because before you get started, if you have a ball, make sure uh, you have a ball that's the right size. Um, if it's too low, it doesn't work real well. If it's too high, it doesn't. So when you sit on the ball, if you look at Bob's thighs here, they're parallel to the ground. Pretty close, isn't it? Yeah. So this is pretty close. If his butt was down here, that would mean it's a little bit too low. And if, it, if the ball is like this and his, his thigh is at an angle like this, then it's too high. The nice thing about the ball, if you're a little bit off, a little bit plus or minus, it's not a real big deal. Yeah, this is probably a little bit bigger than I'd want it, to right. be honest with you, because I don't usually do the seated exercises. Right. But one uh, thing's for sure is if Bob wouldn't be able to use a ball this way. Yeah, that would be a problem. <laughs> yeah, that would be a problem. But Bob would be able to use a ball this size, even though it's a right. little bit small. You know, yeah, this actually is not bad. I know it's not, I'm angled up a little bit, but for all the exercise I do, um, generally that would be a right. crack. Yep. So okay, so make sure you got it properly inflated. They'll give you a pump in the container with it. You know, you can tell that by working with it. Once you sit on it, work with it, you'll know very quickly if it's too too firm or too soft. All right, Brad, let's get started, man. Say I'm no up. more, Bob. Say no <laughs> more. Then we're going to start out with beginning exercise. Just sit on the ball, get used to it first. Now, if you need to uh, hold on to the furniture, Bob, you need something to hold no, on I to. No, I think I'm fine. Or get a stick or something to balance. We're just going to start with marching. Like well, this. Yeah, that fine. <laughs> Good posture, as tall as you can get while you do this. Don't let yourself get round. And you won't get your knees up as high with good posture, but that's okay because that's good exercise technique, and that's what our goal is. And we're going to do maybe 10 to 20. No, I leg. don't do these. Yeah. <laughs> it does take a little bit of practice, but it doesn't take real long to get good at it. And that's going to help your balance, Bob. Wonderful sure. for balance. Next thing is I call them long arc quads or kicks. Like this, good tall balance. So, so just don't flap your leg out if you can do it with good control. This good is a little harder. Oh, yeah. You're working your core quite a bit here. And this is one of those things that until you do it, you say, oh, wow, this, this is more exercise than I anticipated. Oh, nice work. Make sure you breathe. Good point, Bob. I'm going to be the first breathe. one to say that. I'm really proud of myself. Yeah. You caught, you're, you're, I'm learning. Yep. It's all part of being the master. Yeah. Okay. The Same next thing, thing we're going to do is combine. Now, this is a little more advanced. When your left knee goes up, your right hand goes up. And if you get that mixed up, it's not a big deal. But up and reach. Reach for the sky. Reach for the sky. Reach. How's your balance doing, Bob? Stand up. Challenge you a little bit more. So high. And you know, always <laughs> playing games. Yeah. I'm serious about exercise here, Bob. Serious. Yeah, this is a little, you know, can be tough at times. Okay, and now if you don't have any back problem, you want to limber up your back, or if your back is low back we're talking about, uh, we're just going to roll forward and back anterior posterior pelvic tilts. 
Now, this should be completely pain-free if it bothers your back. You shouldn't be doing it. So we're moving the pelvis back and forth. Right. Yep. It's kind of hard for some people to do. Right. And it's a, a hard concept to understand. But the beauty of the ball, Bob, it allows you, because it rolls, to get a hang of it. Usually on the ball, I can teach people teach to people do it. Teach people to do it a lot easier. Yeah. So, so and now let's go right to left. You know, if you're working on being a, what is it, a hula dancer, a right. belly dancer, these would be this good. This would be a good start. Yeah, yeah good start. Because then, then you go into circles. Whoa. Whoa. Clockwise, clockwise and counterclockwise. And counterclockwise. And counterclockwise. If you happen to have your stick, you can hold this off. Work it back here. Oh, there's lots of things to do with simple tools for exercise. Okay. Now, all right. This one's a little more advanced. Take your time with it. You may want to have your hold your hand on, like Bob could hold onto the cupboard right sure. there. Why don't you face this? One? There you go. And we're just gonna roll back so your back is supported. Hands up crossed here. And if you need to hold on to something, there's nothing wrong with that to get started. And we're sitting. You do some supported sit, sit ups. This really supports the back. If you do have some back issues, this is a much safer way to do sit-ups than if you're just laying on the ground. Doesn't that feel good on your back? Yeah. Now? And as I'm looking at the computer, I can see a heart. So someone sent us a heart. Oh, By the way, if you're on Facebook, give us a thumbsies and yeah. the heartsies. Yeah, those heartsies yeah. that bounce across. So yeah, we always like to see those. Okay. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to lay down on the floor. So you need to do this on a carpeted floor or a mat like we have here. Now we got to give a little love to FEI. They uh, we got these mats down below in our description. Um, if you want to buy a mat, these are good quality mats. Yeah, they uh, are. They're nice so. and comfortable. Make your exercise be much more enjoyable. So we're gonna wrap our legs up. Body, I mean, Lonnie, how does it look? You got yeah. me in? Can you Don't see me too? Oh, okay. Now this one, you're gonna lift the ball up. If you haven't done this before, you wrap your legs around and keep your shoes on. And it's better, actually, if you have shorts on because your skin helps grab the ball. And we're going to simply lift the ball in the air like this. This one is not easy if you've never done it before. No, it's not. So take your time with it. Sometimes you have to wrap your own legs around the side of the ball and squeeze into it like a clam and lift it up. Yeah, this is not a beginner. This is an advanced. You can take your hands around your knees and help. So that way, if you're starting, and you may only do five or six of these, that's the start sure. of it. But after a few couple of weeks or so, you'll be up to 10 to 20 of them. Okay. Now, this next one is a little bit easier. You may want to start to this one if that one's too hard. Leave your legs on the ball. It helps maintain a neutral back so it's healthy. And just go up like this. So just the crunch from the shoulders up. Don't let your neck go way up like this. We're not going to flex our neck. We want to keep our necks in a neutral position. It's kind of like you're just lifting your head towards the ceiling, yep. right, Brad? Yep. Take them off. Not your head up. as much. Yep. Shoulder blades off the floor if you can. And believe me, you'll feel your abdominal. Oh, muscles. man, you do. Oh, yeah. It's fun, Bob. I might have to add that one in. No. <laughs> That's a tough one. Now, this is a little more advanced. This is for if you can do the one we did, the previous two. You're going to add those together. So get a hold of that ball with your legs the best you can. Oh, my God. You got it, Bob? That's a tough one. There you go. Oh, my God. Are you doing a oh. little crunch? Oh, I'm going to be sore tomorrow. Yeah. Oh. See yeah, that's, can... that's my limit right there. Cross your hands like this across your chest. Okay. Like that, like you're in the coffin. And then bring your knees to I'm you. going to be in a coffin here pretty soon, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, this is... Oh. Oh. oh, my gosh, Bob. You... <laughs> I haven't done like this one, apparently. All right. All right. What are people going to think? <laughs> I want your wife to see this one. All right. And then this one is probably even harder yet. So I think I'll just let you do that one. This one gets the obliques a little bit, and it scratches your back on the floor, so it feels good. You can do it, Bob. Oh, yeah. you <laughs> can do it, Lonnie said. Yeah, Lonnie is really yeah. helping out here. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready for the next one, Bob? Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't ready for the last one. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> what do we got? You know, this one you like. We just oh, have yeah. one. Hamstring curls. Oh, I don't lose my balance. The ball's bigger than I'm used to. Ah, yeah, it does make a difference, doesn't it? Amazing. So this one, you're pushing into the ball a little yeah. bit. If you're starting, you just leave your butt on the floor and push down into the ball, and you'll feel those hamstrings working. If that's too easy, this works core as well as hamstrings. Get your buttocks into the air about six, eight inches, and then pull it towards you. 
And then you want to finish up with the single leg ones. Yeah, uh, if you're really getting strong and you're laughing, oh, oh, this, oh, is really easy, this is too easy, then lift one leg up and throw it on one leg. And if you can do that, well, then you're signing up for the Olympics pretty soon because I get pretty tired after a few of them. It is a really nice hamstring. It'll be good timing for the Winter Olympics. There you go. Okay. Right, where are we at now, Brad? I don't know where are we at. <laughs> okay, now this one's kind of a fun one. Okay, grab the ball with your legs kind of straight between your ankles. And then you're going to lift the ball up and pass it to your hands. And then go back down with the ball then over your head. So it's pass the ball, hands the feet to the bottom of your body to above your head. Foot level. How you doing, Bob? I'm doing okay on this one. How's he doing, Lonnie? Be, be honest with me, Lonnie. <laughs> Good. I'm not even watching because I have a hard time doing mine. I owe Lonnie a few bucks now, apparently. <laughs> okay, good. Let's go on to the next one. All right. All right. We're prone now? Yep. Okay. Now, these are kind of nice. Supports the back. And you can put your hands down like this, and we're just going to lift one leg up at a time. Now, as you work with the ball, you're going to find out quickly that if you can move your position on the ball, you can make the exercise harder or easier. Yeah, out here, obviously, harder. Yeah. Here, easier, almost coming up on its own there. Right, considerably easier. So yeah. just moving the ball a little bit. And, and then adjust the re When we work with patients, that's a big advantage. And it, does, it doesn't take long, you, you figure that out real quickly. Now this one is a little bit more advanced. You come forward, and I like to just put my forearms on the ground, and I put my forehead on my, my thumbs like this, and then I lift both legs up at the same time. Good for the low back. Should be pain-free if it hurts. Shouldn't be doing it. How are you doing, Bob? I don't know. I don't think it probably looks very good. But... How's it look? <laughs> no, oh, honey. It does. She's a sweetheart. Okay. Okay. Now let's go to the next one. Hands on the ball, we're still prone on the ball, belly on the ball. Once again, it is the beauty of the ball, Bob. That's right. And we're going to go up like this. Range of motion. Now, this one, if you go way down on your chest, it's very easy. If you walk up so your belt line is more towards the ball, it becomes much harder. And then if you take your hands and point them out in front of you, I cannot even do that. There, Bob's doing it. If I go back, then I can do it. My back doesn't tolerate that motion very well, so this is how I do it. But, you know, it depends on your on your body and the strength that you have. Now we're going to add rotations because we want to maintain range of motion looking over one shoulder, over one shoulder. I always, you know, this is a good exercise if you're driving. If people that get older can't look over their shoulder very well because their body gets tight and their spine gets tight because they don't do this type of activity. So start this when you're young, like Bob and I. And as you get into your 80s and 90s, you'll still be looking over your shoulder. I'm glad to think that, just fine. Yeah, that you think we're young, Brad. <laughs> okay. Now, this one, I'll, I'll just do this by myself because Bob okay. and I as well. You have to you walk out like this, and this is a really good way to do push-ups that vary the resistance. Like right now, it's extremely easy. I'll start people on this with shoulder problems as they get stronger, and then I'll say, just walk out a little bit. And it gets harder. And if that's too easy, we walk out a little bit more. And this is one of those things that can get up to the, the athletic level. If you go a good way, he's keeping his core here. Yeah. He's keeping straight across yeah. the body is nice, nice and straight. Oh. So you can really do a nice push-up variation with that. Oh, well done. Oh, we're done. No, well done. Oh, thank you. Wow, I still got a half a list to go. All right, the let's pointer keep rolling. Along, Bob. No pointer. This works out well. This is a really nice one if you do have back problems or if you don't. You but it's start off beginner just hands, right? Yep. The ball is offering an incredible amount of support to your back and it helps keep it in a neutral and then safe you just position. Do a single leg. Yeah. And then always make sure you're breathing. And then uh, we're gonna go to the opposite arm and opposite leg. There you go. So right arm up, left leg. Boom. And if you want to throw the Bob Shrub variation, what I do is, is I go like this. I go one, two, three. There you go. One, two, three. 
<laughs> get on all different wow. parts of the Dude. the back, the upper back there. This is one yeah, that Bob do. does. I, I don't yeah. do this one, so I'm kind of lost on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm used to being lost. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, you've been found? Yeah. All right. Okay. Next one. We're gonna. These are a little more advanced. Bob, don't you? We'll do sideline hip and right. And I'll do the less advanced. I'm. I'm doing going for my knee. He's going from his. His foot, his so, leg is straight. Yeah, right where I'm pointing here. It's a lot easier with the knee down like this. Yeah. So it's two variations like this, but this again offers nice support to the hips and the low back, and it really isolates that hip adductor. And what you don't realize is you're actually using working the one down below too. That one has to work yeah. really hard to stabilize. And yeah. I, mine's starting to burn already. Yeah, because usually what I'll do is I'll do like 30 on one side, and I'll go to the other side, and I have trouble doing 30 because the, I was already tired, already sure. fatigued out. Yeah. So, okay. So do both sides on that one. Otherwise, when you walk, you start to walk in circles, and we don't want to have that. Okay. Now, I'm going to show another one where Bob gets ready sure. for the last one. This one's a little more advanced, too. You have to be used to the ball and get used to rolling around on it. And you come up to here, and it's a really good abdominal and core muscle strengthening exercise. And you get some shoulder work there. And now this one, if it gets too easy like this, my hands are about 16, 18 inches apart. If I bring my hands closer together so my fingers and my thumbs touch, then it gets a little more wobbly, and it takes more core strength, a little more balance. And then if you want to get more advanced, you can go to one knee, and then it works. This is a great hip flexor one as well. I like to do this one if you're a bicycler and you're clipped into your pedals and you want to work on an upstroke. Those look pretty advanced, Fred. Yeah, they're they're fun. These are the high level. If you can do these with your hands touching, that's really oh. good. That's I usually don't do them that way, but they're because they are aggressive. Can like, you move that other camera over this way just to hear? Oh. The infamous ball. On the wall. There we go. Okay. So my wife and I both do these. Really nice way to do squats. Um, she's got a little bit of a hamstring issue, and it's really helped with that. So basically, you know, I put the feet out fairly far so that when you bend down, the knee does not go past the foot. And this is a great way to do this because you can. The ball is going to give you support. You've got to make sure you have uh, grippy shoes on. Yeah. Or you'd be on carpet uh, with with your feet. Your yeah. feet. Your sleep can. Your feet can slide yeah. out. So usually what I do is I'll go down like this, and then when I come up, I'll just do a little posture exercise. Yeah. Squeeze my shoulder blades together at the same time. Thanks for a good combination. Yeah. And I don't, I, I don't even know if I go down to level. I mean, I'm, you know, you can obviously, yeah. but um, you, you're getting a workout either way. Right. Good quad, and, and you get the, some of the glutes on this too. Sure. So, yeah, I like that because a lot of people will, without thinking about it, lean forward and right and slouch, and that's not what you want. All right. You want me to read, Bob? I don't know. I don't know. Let me read. I'll try. Bonnie, you got any on you? She's going to put the camera back. <laughs> so, Bob, this person logged in late. And uh, how tall are you and what size ball do you have? I'm six foot six. And uh, they have the balls. You know, if you look at a lot of times, they have charts for what your height is. Mm -hmm. Because I don't even know what, do you know what this would be, Brad? Well, it doesn't matter what the ball says because, like. Oh, yeah, you found that even the numbers tend to vary right. from, per, from person to person. I think right? these are both rated the same size ball. This is a Gold Fit 75 centimeter, and this is another manufacturer 75 centimeter. Obviously, there there's no standards, and they're inflated to be about the same height. If you're on YouTube and you go to our Amazon preferred product section, uh, we are, we have the Gymnic balls on there. We really like those. Yeah, those, 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 those are good quality. Those are high quality balls. I mean, and I, I, I believe they do have the chart of your height related to the side diameter of the ball. You sure. Uh, good question. How about you, Lonnie? Yeah, you're having the question, baby. Yes. Uh, thank you for the Oh, well, thank you. Thanks. There's no questions on Facebook, but thank you. We'll thank you back. Oh, I'm gonna go back. And sure. Brad's gonna go ahead and look back. Um, the ball, you know, it, it, you don't necessarily have to do all those exercises, obviously. Uh, but you know, I, I I like to incorporate in my life so that I'll have. I, like I said, I use like five of them, and it just there's certain exercises that's really hard to do unless you have the ball. Like I said, the ball on the wall one is just a, a fantastic one for me. 
I do the uh, hip abduction ones using the ball, and I do the hamstring, because hamstring is really difficult to do at home unless you have really specific equipment for it, and the ball works well for that. So I, I do that along with some kettlebell swings. But how are you doing, Brad? Bob, do these count as weight-bearing exercises? I probably interested maybe for osteo, uh, uh, yeah, uh, osteoporosis. So the question is, do these count as weight-bearing exercises? Well, definitely when you uh, are doing the, the squats with the ball on the wall. Um, the other ones, you're getting weight-bearing through the arms, which, which you know, with a lot of them, which sometimes you don't. Otherwise, I would say no, Brad, wouldn't you? But it's, I, I don't think they are um, really serve as good weight-bearing exercises. Probably not, but they're still going to be great strengthening, good right. balance, all the other benefits. Um, so, you know, strengthening helps with osteoporosis too. You know, that's why they encourage you to lift weights too when you have osteoporosis. You want the weight bearing exercises. The other interesting thing I saw about um, uh, osteoporosis or osteopenia, which you got to be a little careful about, but they found out that if you do some jumping, you know, like this, it's supposed to really uh, help, you know, increase your bone density. But I'd want to be very careful with that because you don't want to fall. And But I don't know if you understand the way bone works. Bone uh, responds to what we call Wolf's Law. The more pressure you put on the bone, the, th the, the more solid it becomes, the bigger it becomes. Sure, right. So, the question is, how do you get up and down with bad knees? How do you get up and down with bad knees? That's tough, isn't it, Brad? Yeah, and we work with that with a number of people. If it, if it is unsafe, we, we just don't do it. Right. Um, but we do try and teach people how to do it. Usually in the household is used furniture. So it, we don't have any furniture, but you know, you have something to hold on to and, and you, you can use a ball. Of course it's wobbly, but you're going to work down slowly. You can use a chair and a counter or, right. two, or two chairs, but yeah, it's tough if you have bad knees to try to get on the floor. I'd almost rather do exercises that didn't involve going down to the floor. Right. Yeah. It, you know, it just depends if your knees are that bad where it hurts and it's unsafe to get down. I right. think now we have, have we done a, a video with exercises on the bed? I think we did. Yeah. Then we, yeah. Just last. Oh, you mean on the bed, on the bed, not yeah. with the bed. Yeah. We did the one with the bed too. That was um, last week. Yeah, yeah. Last week. And that on that one, you could do a lot of exercises without even getting down on the floor. Right. So you're, you're sure what you're doing is, uh, and you should look this up. Um, yeah, we had strengthening your core and and thighs um, using, using the bed, but we did a lot of things like this. You can do it with countertops too. Sure. But you're going like this. You're doing flexion. Right. You can do extension. You know, we we had it all. We're going uh, sideways and do abduction. You can can easily get right. all four yeah. planes. So. I think uh, he's asking about what exercise you need to do to help uh, lower back stiffness. Okay, the question is what exercises to do to help lower back stiffness? Well, generally, if you have not been diagnosed with like spinal stenosis or spondylolisthesis, the number one exercise we want you working on is extension. So what we're going to do, you're going to start off, and you can do this on the bed. You don't have to do this on the floor, but you're going to start by just laying like this, and then eventually you're going to get up onto your elbows like this, and maybe the, maybe the first couple of days, this is all you try is, is get a little stretch like this. Then eventually you're going to start doing press ups. You got your hands beneath your shoulders and you're going to start pressing up like this. Now, if this feels fine, it doesn't make you have increased pain. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, it, it, it's starting to help your stiffness. You can go further and further. And eventually you want to get to the point where you're lifting all the way up. Now, you don't want to do this. You don't want to be lifting the, the butt up the pelvis up, that needs to stay on the bed. And, and you're gonna work this further and further and further. I mean, if you're really dedicated to this, you could do this every hour. You could do the, you know, 10, 10 15 of these every hour. The other one that we have people do with, with uh, stiff backs is laying flat on your back. You're gonna go ahead and you're gonna do rotations. This is one every, just about everybody can do. You're gonna do gentle trunk rotations it looks like you're moving the hips, but you're actually moving the hips and the back. Sure. So I'm keeping the shoulders down, and eventually you can work on, you know, further and further off to the sides. Those are two really good stretches for, for the back. Right. So, again, these should be pain-free. They should feel good. 
when you're doing them as well as when you've done it. If not, you may have a, a problem that may need to be addressed with the therapist. Yeah, don't be going into painful directions. Right. So right. very important. Uh, another question was about how many repetitions and how long do you do these? Uh, with these, I like to have people start with five to ten repetitions of, of each exercise. Pick out the ones that work good for you, that feel good, that are uh, producing the results you want. And then these kind of exercises, oftentimes you can work, especially the core ones, you can work up to higher uh, repetitions, like 20, 30. I, I do up to 50 on the ones I do, but I've been doing them for a few years. So uh, 10, 20 to start out with and then build your way up to those higher numbers if you uh, feel good for that. Someone was asking, how do you fix patella alta? And that's, uh, you know, where the kneecap is running up a little bit high. Okay. And, and it tends to also sometimes then dislocate on you. Sure. But, I mean, one thing is you can just do the stretches on the kneecap. It always tends to help. Just to loosen it up. Yeah. So I, not going to be easy to see on this, but you can take your thumbs. And the leg's got to be completely relaxed to the point where you can move the kneecap. And you can actually stretch it and and push it in a downward position a little bit. In a seated position, like yeah. this usually works the best. You don't have to be on a ball. You can just be on a chair. We just have them. Have you can on. move it in all directions. Um, it just tends to help. The other thing I'd probably do with patella alta is I would probably do the quad stretch. You know, I would do this stretch, you know, yeah. um, and and uh, you can do that by taking a, a strap. We use uh, you can use a stretch out strap here. You can hook it up to your foot. And then you can help pull it up like this. You can actually go over your shoulders like this and give it a good stretch. The quadricep, it, it you know, it's, it's it's actually attached to the the patella, so it can actually uh, relax that a little bit. So it's a good question, Lonnie. You got any? No. Okay, Brad. We run it down to the bottom here. Thing with uh, patella alta again, it, it, it's not a problem if it's not giving you pain or if it's not dislocating or if it's not giving you like chondromalacia. But I guess you don't want it to get to that point either. So that, that's good to absolutely do that stretch. Um, so um, Mark had had a laminectomy about a year ago and he says his back fatigues easily. Uh, these would be good exercises to do as long as they're not painful and they just, if it just fatigues your. Your muscles, you know, work them until they're fatigued. Do, do the number of reps. If you take 10 or 15, you get fatigued. But continue to do them three or four days a week. I wouldn't do them seven days a week by any means because you need the muscles time to relax and rebuild. So three to five times per week and just keep building up. They will strengthen up with time. So just, you know, stick with it at a consistent uh, uh, pace. And pick out the exercises on here that work well for you and, are, again, are pain-free. They just create uh, fatigue is all. All right. I think we're going to call it, Brad. Sure. It's uh, been a half hour. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Yes. Straight up move.